California Speedway, NASCAR's home in the West for the past 24 years. The track was announced to be reconfigured in 2020, and this year may be the last time we see NASCAR race on the original two-mile layout. Today, let's take a look back on the history of California Speedway. The idea was born on April 20th, 1994, when Roger Penske and Kaiser Steel would announce the construction of a racetrack on the site of an abandoned Kaiser Steel mill in Fontana, California. CART was the first racing series to confirm a race on California Speedway just a day after its announcement. NASCAR would follow suit and would agree to sanction a Cup Series race at the racetrack upon completion, marking the first time NASCAR had ever made an agreement to race on a yet-to-be-built racetrack. The layout of California Speedway would mimic Michigan International Speedway, a two-mile D-shaped oval owned by Roger Penske. Construction would then begin in November of 1995 and would finish in late 1996. On January 10, 1997, the first test session would be held on the newly built racing surface by Penske driver Paul Tracy in an open wheel car. In early May, NASCAR would commence their first test in California Speedway, and the official opening of the track would be on June 20th, 1997. The first race would be held a day later by the NASCAR West Series, won by Ken Schrader. The Cup Series race followed the very next day and was won by none other than four-time champion Jeff Gordon, leading 113 of the 250 lap event coasting across the finish line out of fuel to win the inaugural California 500. A crowd of over 85,000 fans attended the race that day, making it a large success. The track grew along with NASCAR in the early 2000s, with an additional 16,000 seats and 28 skyboxes being added to the main grandstands. In 2003, lights were added to the facility to allow for night races, and in 2008, the name of the track was officially changed to Auto Club Speedway, following the Automobile Club of Southern California becoming the title sponsor for the racetrack. The growth of the track prompted a second date on the NASCAR Cup schedule. This however wouldn't turn out the way NASCAR had hoped as attendance numbers dropped significantly by over 20,000 people from 2003 to 2004. Attendance issues only got worse in the late 2000s and many in the industry opposed the racetrack having two dates on the calendar. In 2011, California Speedway had its second date removed from the Cup schedule. Furthermore, the seating capacity was reduced from 92,000 seats to only 68,000 in 2014. With the overall decline of NASCAR in the late 2010s, the racetrack suffered from lackluster ticket sales and declining TV revenue. Changes needed to be made, and on September 8, 2020, California Speedway revealed its plans to reconfigure from its two-mile layout into a high-banked, half-mile short track, hoping to attract more fans and viewers, many of which in recent years have advocated for more short tracks in NASCAR. The short track will take inspiration from both Bristol and Martinsville Speedway, and will take up a lot less land area than the current layout, allowing the track to save a significant amount of money on property tax and maintenance costs. Although reconstruction was supposed to start this year, Postponements due to COVID means we'll likely start in 2023 instead, giving the original two-mile racetrack one more race. Opinions on this matter are certainly varied, with many drivers being against the reconfiguration. The wide, low-grip surface of the track is difficult to race on, having not been repaved since 1997. The 25-year-old asphalt also creates significant tire wear, allowing for strategy as well as tire management to come into play. With the 75 feet wide racing surface, the widest of any oval in NASCAR, the track also promotes many different lines and grooves for drivers, allowing them to search for clean air and not get trapped behind slower cars that they can't pass, a problem we've seen a lot of in recent years. The long straightaways also make bump drafting a large role, especially on restarts to gain better straight line speed. Many would consider California Speedway a driver's track as typically the cream rises to the top. If we take a look back at the 31 cup races held at California Speedway, 24 of them have been won by cup champions, and the rest include marquee drivers like Carl Edwards, Casey Kane, Greg Biffle, and Mark Martin. Despite drivers' love for this racetrack, however, it doesn't hide the fact that fan approval of these races hasn't always been the greatest, as certain drivers tend to dominate during long green flag runs, and close racing isn't always achieved with large gaps between cars. Although California had its lackluster races, many iconic moments have also occurred. 
California Speedway saw the first cup victories for future champions Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch. These two would also become the most successful drivers at this track currently, with Johnson having taken 6 victories and Busch with 4. The track has also produced some great finishes as well. The 2010 Nationwide race saw 4 drivers battle it out for the victory in a green-white checkered finish. In 2011, we got one of the best finishes of the COT era with Kevin Harvick's last lap pass on Jimmy Johnson. From 2014 to 2017, we saw 4 consecutive years of overtime finishes with some incredible battles. In 2014, we saw Kyle Busch hold off a hard charge in Kyle Larson on the final lap. Brad Keselowski would go from 6th to 1st in just 2 laps to win in 2015. In 2016, Jimmy Johnson would pass a dominant Kevin Harvick on the final restart to secure the victory, and in 2017, Kyle Larson would grab his second ever cup victory. Arguably the most famous finish at California, however, is the 2013 race where an intense battle between the top two, Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano, allowed for third place Kyle Busch to soar by them both on the final turn of the final lap to steal the win. Although general fan consensus in recent years have been mixed, myself and many others love the unique nature of the old, worn down racetrack. With over 24 years of racing on the surface, a repave was bound to happen sooner or later. Hopefully the new configuration will provide good racing and also bring new life to the facility. However, I will sure miss the original California Speedway.